Welcome to the exhibition George Washington Wilson, Queen Victoria's Photographer in Scotland. Using photographs from the Royal Collection, the exhibition begins with Wilson's first Royal Commission in 1854 and concludes with examples of his final photographic portraits from the early 1880s. Also shown are Wilson's commercial landscape stereoscopic photographs and photographs taken by his son, Charles, who succeeded his father as photographer at Balmoral. Many of the photographs on display were part of Queen Victoria's private collection and were taken specifically for her photograph albums. The photographs have been arranged to show the three main chapters of Wilson's career. The gallery features five walls where the photographs hang and seven display cases that contain photograph albums, books and archival documents. This film will give an overview of the exhibition whilst focusing on objects specific to the exhibition narrative along the way. The first work that is presented to the visitor on entering the gallery is a large map of Aberdeen by Wilson and shows his skills as a draftsman. The map dates to 1850 and is the earliest work in the exhibition by Wilson. Union Street can clearly be seen running horizontally through the centre of the map and Wilson was able to capture the details of buildings and streets by drawing freehand while standing on the city's rooftops. On the next wall, the viewer is introduced to the first photographs that Wilson was to take for the royal family. In 1854, Wilson, together with his then business partner John Hay, were commissioned to photograph the building of Balmoral Castle. The photographs chart the construction of the new castle from the spring to the autumn of 1854. These photographs mark the beginning of Wilson's lifelong association with the royal family, though it's the last over 30 years. One of the most famous of Wilson's portraits of Queen Victoria hangs on this wall. The seemingly innocent portrait of a queen in the throes of mourning her husband took on a completely different meaning when it was published in 1864. The original photograph was commissioned by Queen Victoria as a memorial to Prince Albert who had died two years earlier. It also featured the third person of John Grant who had stood on the right in the original photograph. When it was published, the photograph was cropped to vertical, taking out Grant and leaving Brown with the Queen. The photograph's original message was lost and instead it drew attention to the Queen as a grieving widow. It was also seen as visual proof of the rumours that were circulating about the relationship between the Queen and John Brown. This wall explores Wilson's stereoscopic and landscape photographs. He is best known for producing thousands of photographs of the Scottish landscape in a variety of different sizes of print. By introducing different sizes of print, the public were given more choice as to how they bought Wilson's photographs. He was also a shrewd businessman and distributed his work across the world. Here, the visitor to the gallery is introduced to Wilson's stereoscopic photographs. These were the photographs for which he was best known. When viewed using a stereoscope, the photographs appeared three-dimensional. Features like trees and boulders almost leapt off the photograph. Wilson based many of his photographs on locations made famous by tourist guidebooks and contemporary literature, and he returned to these as a source of inspiration. His picturesque studies of the Scottish landscape were widely distributed and bought by tourists as Scotland was emerging as a major tourist resort. In an increasingly competitive market, Wilson strove to keep abreast of the competition by experimenting with lenses and exposure times. By 1860, Wilson was able to take the so-called instantaneous photographs using a fraction of a second, thus eliminating blur. In this example, the photographer has captured the smoke leaving a hunter's rifle, a detail that would otherwise prove impossible to capture with a normal exposure of a few seconds. As a royal photographer, Wilson's photographs illustrated Queen Victoria's own recollections of her stays at Scotland and Balmoral in her book titled Leaves from the Journal of Our Life in the Highlands. The elaborate cover of this book, which features a gold tool decorative design, was published in 1868 and can be seen in one of the cases along this wall. The final two walls of the exhibition explore the last portraits of the royal family that Wilson was to take as a royal photographer. By 1877, Wilson was at the peak of its success 
and had expanded his business to incorporate one of the largest printing works in the world. The exhibition closes with a selection of portraits of the Queen with her children and members of her household, together with portraits of those who lived on the Balmoral estate. When George Washington Wilson retired in 1888, his youngest son Charles Wilson inherited the title of photographer to the Queen and produced a series of tableaux vivants that also hung in this section of the exhibition. As well as photographing the royal family, Wilson also took portraits of members of the Queen's household. Many of these portraits were collected by the Queen for her private albums, but some were also available to buy in the form of carte de visites, like the portraits of John Brown, seen on the left, and Mr. and Mrs. Brown, who were John Brown's parents, on the right. This is my favourite photograph from the exhibition and interests me because of the arrangement of the group around the central figure of Mrs. Brown, seated on the right. John Brown Senior stands on the left. It's an affectionate study and was taken outside the Browns farm near Crathy. John Brown died in 1875 and Margaret died the following year. The woman in the centre could be Anne, their daughter. The second photograph on the left shows John Brown, the Queen's personal attendant. On his lapel he wears the Faithful Servant Medal and the Victoria Devoted Servant Medal. The exhibition concludes with the work of Wilson's youngest son, Charles, who photographed a series of tableaux vivants that were performed at Balmoral during the late 1880s and early 1890s. Charles was appointed as royal photographer at Balmoral following his father's retirement. The tableau O Living Pictures were performed by amateur actors drawn from the royal family and the royal household. Themes of the plays were centred on aspects of history or famous plays like the scene from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. This players would be expected to hold a static pose for minutes, which must have seemed like hours, in front of the audience that included Queen Victoria, who was a keen advocate of the performances. Alongside George Washington Wilson's photographs, the exhibition also includes a display of items from the University of Aberdeen's museum collection, which tell us a little bit more about Victorian culture, photography and visual effects. During the 1800s, a magic lantern projector like this would have been used to view photographic images publicly, at a talk or a lecture, or been rented by a middle-class family to use at home. The magic lantern would have been used with photographic lantern slides like these, which were produced by the George Washington Wilson Company in 1901, eight years after Wilson's death, when his son Charles was in charge of the business. These slides contain images of Hawaii, Distant countries were popular subject matter for lantern slides as there was an appetite for collecting and viewing other cultures. Other visual entertainment came from stereoscopes like this one. When Wilson's stereoscopic photograph of Balmoral is viewed through the lenses, it appears in three dimensions. Stereoscopes were invented in 1838 by Sir Charles Wheatstone. Queen Victoria was impressed when she first used one at the Great Exhibition of 1851. Handheld stereoscopes like this became hugely popular, along with other devices that explored the relationship between vision and perception. Invented in 1832, the Fenachistoscope, marketed as a magic wheel, was the first widespread animation device to create the illusion of fluid motion. The effect is created by holding the device in front of a mirror, spinning the disc and viewing the reflection through the slits. Although phenakistoscopes and other types of visual illusions became popular in 19th century middle class households, the craze for stereoscopic viewers was unmatched in terms of scale. George Washington Wilson's business fueled the craze for stereoscopics by producing a vast range of stereoscopic photographs of picturesque landscapes. We hope that you have enjoyed this brief tour of what amounts to a small selection of photographs from the many thousands that were taken by George Washington Wilson. The exhibition gives a taste of the broad range of photographs taken by Wilson over his 30 year career as a royal photographer. The photographs chosen for this exhibition reflect his artistic, innovative and commercial talent as one of the 19th century's most important photographers.